uh, azimuthal equidistant projection map that the USGS actually uses is the flat earth map. The uh, azimuthal equidistant projection map that the USGS actually uses is the flat earth map. The UN logo is another example of it. The UN logo is actually a flat earth map divided into 33 Masonic sections, by the way. What if the powers that be who sold us the globe deception had a backup plan? What if they could just simply take the same globe they fooled us with once and <gasps> smash it flat? Could they dupe us again? Are we really big enough idiots to fall for a blue frisbee? Right in our faces? Is the truth really right there in plain sight? Or were we sold a false model yet again? by snake oil salesmen such as Eric Dubay, Matt Boylan, Mark Sargent, and Jaronism. These were the first four guys to come along and wave the blue frisbee in our face. I'm going to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that the AE map what they claim to be the official map of the flat earth, I'm going to prove it's not only wrong, but it has just as many holes as the globe. And anyone who wears it on their clothing, anyone who pushes it or promotes it is pushing disinformation, knowingly or unknowingly. So, I bet you guys are wondering what sort of proof I've come up with. Well, let's dig in, shall we? Sunrise and sunset angles absolutely prove that the sun does not go in a circle around an AE map or any other circular map. If you go to suncalc.net, you can actually find out where the sun is gonna rise and where the sun is going to set. And apparently in the Southern Hemisphere, such as Australia, they're seeing the sun rise from the Southeast and set in the Southwest. Even in South Africa, they're seeing the sun set in the Southwest. In South America, they're seeing the sun set in the Southwest. Now, no matter where you drag the cursor around in the Southern Hemisphere, at this time of year, in October, the sun is setting to the Southwest. That's a problem for the AE map because that's the opposite direction than the supposed circling sun. If people in the Southern Hemisphere are seeing the sun set to the Southwest, that is in the entirely opposite direction than the supposed circling sun. So, this is a glaring hole in the AE map and model. Now, I didn't just take suncalc.net's word for it. I actually asked some friends in Australia and further south to help me run some experiments. And here's what we came up with. Hey guys, this is Alex. Okay, I'm in uh, Warburton. In, uh, which is in uh, just east of Melbourne, about an hour east of Melbourne in Australia. We're about, uh, what are we, uh, 37 degrees latitude south, sunset. Today's the 15th of October 2017 and I thought you might be interested in seeing this. So here I've got a compass pointing directly at the sun and it's showing that the sun is currently going down at about 249 degrees west. Now if you know anything about the cardinal directions, you'll know that the sun only goes down uh, in the summer here in the southern hemisphere as far as the Tropic of, uh, uh, what is it, the Tropic of um, Capricorn. Um, which shouldn't, the sun shouldn't be down past due west, okay, uh, which is 270 degrees. Well, it's currently way down 
to 246 southwest which means that it's basically as far as Melbourne is concerned heading straight towards the South Pole um, so I'd like to know if someone can explain that I don't want any convoluted answers um, but just a simple explanation as to why it's not uh, up at least beyond uh, further north than due west which is what it should be Now, some folks may claim, well, the Tropic of Capricorn runs through Australia, so possibly people in Australia are seeing the sunset to the southwest as some sort of weird perspective issue. Now your problem becomes, folks in Tasmania are also seeing the sunset to the southwest, and they live south of the Tropic of Capricorn. It is the 18th of the 10th, 2017, Devonport, Tasmania. Currently watching the sun starting to set right now. My last field of view. Currently now setting. I'm not sure if you can see that out correctly or not. There we go. You have to forgive me, I'm using a sun filter. There we go, 260 degrees just south of west. of October in Devonport, Tasmania. The current time is 7.17 p.m. The sun now on my last visual sight of the horizon is setting at 254 degrees south of west. up my compass properly which I do have sitting right here See clearly that the compass is set on north and it's south of west. For all you doubters out there, this destroys your azimuthal equidistant model and smashes it to pieces. If folks who live south of the Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere are seeing the sun set to the southwest. This is a huge, gaping, glaring hole in the azimuthal equidistant map and the circle sun model. Those of you following my channel for a while probably remember I put out a video called Testing Globe Tards. It was in response to a YouTube channel known as Cool Hard Logic that put out a video series called Testing Flat Tards. Now, Cool Hard Logic actually put out hit pieces not only against flat earthers, but most specifically the azimuthal equidistant map or the popular flat earth model. To my knowledge, I was the only flat earther 
to ever take his challenge and do a debunk video against him. No one else even attempted to do so. No one else even attempted to protect the AE model, the flat earth map, as they claim. Not Eric Dubé, not Jaronism, not Mark Sargent, not any of them. I was the only one to take on cool hard logic. And in the first video I made, I think I did a damn good job debunking him. The problem I ran into was he punched so many holes in the AE map, I got uncomfortable trying to defend it, and I even had to admit that the map is seriously flawed. He never did prove curvature exists or that the earth is spinning, but he damn sure seemed to prove that the map had problems. By the time he put out Testing Flat Tards Part 2, I realized the information he was bringing to the table was going to make it absolutely impossible to defend the AE map and the AE Circle Sun model any longer. It was at that point I decided to give up on the blue frisbee forever. So what do the transitions between night and day look like at the equinoxes on a giant space pizza? An observer on the equator will still see the sun pass directly overhead at solar noon, so the sun must be over the equator. This means observers on the flat earth have to observe the sun rising directly northeast. It would appear to rise from a more northerly direction the further south you go, and tend towards a more easterly direction the further north you go, but would never rise in the east. Similarly, when the sun sets, an observer on the equator of the flat Earth would see it set directly northwest, setting on a more northerly heading the further south you go, and a more westerly heading the further north you go. It would never set due west. You'll be unsurprised to hear that reality disagrees. What actually happens at the equinoxes is that all observers at all latitudes see the sun rise due east and set due west, geographically speaking, not magnetically. Flatards have three choices at this point. They can accept reality and that their idea simply doesn't work, or they can deny reality and continue living in their little fantasy, or they can detail a mechanism by which equatorial observers see the sun a full 45 degrees off where it would actually be in their world. For everyone to see the sun rise in the east on a flat earth, we re-encounter a familiar problem. The sun would have to be in multiple places at the same time for observers up and down the world. And of course, people on the other side of the world will be watching the sun set and will face the same damned problem. All of this whilst the equatorial flatard in the hat says the sun is directly overhead. Since the sun isn't and never can be in multiple places at the same time, the presence of another simple and utterly irreconcilable paradox leads us to the only sensible conclusion that the notion of us living on a giant frisbee is bollocks. Here's a question. Have you ever seen the sun shrink into a dot? Yeah. Oh wait, you mean in real life? No. I've only seen that happen on YouTube videos. But in real life, I've seen it get big as fuck before it goes down. How about you? Have you ever seen the sun shrink into a little teeny weeny little dot before it disappears? Or have you only seen that on a video screen or a TV screen? Have you ever seen it with your actual eyes? Hmm. It does change and the changes are mostly due to the atmosphere. So I can show you a picture of the sun setting in the desert where it's very dry and you'll see the sun shrink and shrink into a tiny, tiny pinprick before it disappears into the horizon. And then I can show you another video of on a more, over the ocean, say, on a more humid day, the sun is going to actually 
expand a little bit due to the atmosphere and then disappear into the horizon like a big ball, as, as many people have seen it. So I'm in the desert. I'm in Nevada, about 100 miles outside of Las Vegas. It's over 100 degrees. I don't know if you can read that. It's 104 outside. See the sun? It's pretty damn big and it's sinking into the horizon. Now, Eric Dubé says that the sun gets bigger when it goes down because of the moisture in the air and the humidity in the air. And he says when you're out in the desert where it's dry, the sun shrinks into a dot. Well, I'm here to tell you, I'm in the desert. It's over 100 degrees. There's no humidity, and the sun ain't shrinking into no fucking dot. All right? And I've never seen the sun shrink into a dot in my entire life, except in videos. So, those of us who've ever been to the desert, like me right now, the sun does not turn into a dot. It gets just as big as it does and goes down when I'm at the ocean. Booyah. Can't do the circle map anymore. Can't do the circle sun anymore. I'm done. And people are gonna say, Jake, you're you're attacking other flat earthers. We should all be sticking together. We should all unite. Shouldn't be attacking anyone. You're being divisive. I've heard that a lot. Right now, Jake, you're being divisive. Don't be divisive. Let me ask you guys this. When you came out and you told your loved ones that you believe the earth is flat or that you know the earth is flat, did that divide you from any of your loved ones? Hmm? Did it divide you from any relationships? Anybody that you used to be close to that you're not close to? Was that truth? like uncomfortable did it divide you from people yeah the truth is divisive so what should you have done should should you have just kept your mouth shut about the flat earth and acted like it was a ball for the rest of your life should i have done that too fucking train jake jake dude we should just all stick together and go after nasa don't go after other flat earthers. It makes us look bad. Oh, oh, okay. So if somebody says that the earth is rising upward to account for gravity, we should just be cool with that. They're our friend too, right? So if they go on camera and say that the earth rises upward and they say they're representing the flat earth, we're all supposed to be cool because hey, they're a flat earther. They're a brother and sister under flat earth. So no matter what you believe, as long as you say it's flat, we all have to love you, right? So if Alex Jones or David Icke became flat earthers tomorrow, we all have to get down and suck their dick and, and protect them too because we can't be divisive. See this kind of logic? It's cult-like mentality and I'm done with it. I'm not gonna take place in cult-like mentality and cult-like behavior. I'm the flat earth asshole. I don't care if I stand alone. I don't care if I lose subs. YouTube is over. They're censoring the real truth. Shit, they might censor this video. You might want to take a fucking copy before this one goes down or this channel goes down. Who knows? Uh, I don't like drama. This video's all about the drama. 
I don't like drama. You guys are being like teenage girls. This is drama. Yeah, I agree with that person. Thumbs up. I don't like drama. Let's all just sing kumbaya and be friends around the fucking ice wall. Oh wait, but we can't go there because there's guards at the ice wall and they'll shoot you. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> yeah, cult-like mentality. Cult-like mentality. I don't like drama, so I'm not going to participate if anyone calls out anyone else that's part of my little cult group. Yeah, exactly. Because that's cult-like mentality right there. <laughs> oh, it's drama. Oh, is it? No, drama is your, your friend's wife is fucking your sister and isn't telling her husband. That's drama. Drama is your typical Jerry Springer shit going across the nation, right? <laughs> this is the fucking shape of the world and the truth that we're talking about. You know, it's kind of an intellectual war. A war on your mind. War is dramatic, motherfucker. I'm sorry if dramatic events make you uncomfortable. War is fucking dramatic and it's fucking war right now. They want to fucking give you globe number two, the blue fucking frisbee with the ice wall that surrounds you. <gasps> Don't try to go there or the guards will shoot you. Oh, and look up, there's your little circle sun going around you and magically lighting up all the continents correctly. Did any of you guys ever stop to think how do all those continents and locations get their correct specific number of daylight hours? Verified documented daylight hours. How do they get those daylight hours with the circle sun going like this? Hmm Fucking train Jake you've gone crazy The sun goes in a circle around the little circle flat earth, dude. Come on Don't you know that man? Do your research Oh really? <laughs> okay I guess I'm just dumb, but hey, how much does the sun light up on the circle map? Like what shape does it make? Does it make a circle that goes around in a circle? Hmm? Like this? Or wait, does it make a half pie shape? It's a half pie shape that goes around. So half the earth is always illuminated, right? While the other half is dark. Which is it? Is it a circle that goes around the circle like a spotlight going around the North Pole? Or is it a half pie that goes around? Hmm. Or wait, is it like a, a yin yang where they both have a little tail? The night and the sun both have a little tail goes around is it that hmm what shape is it because specific locations get specific documented verified certain amount of daylight hours during different parts of the year so let's say for instance if one location gets 10 hours of sunlight another location gets 12 and a half hours of sunlight and another location gets 14 hours of sunlight do you really think just taking a circle and spinning it around the circle is gonna make all the times work correctly and light them up all correctly or is it a half pie shape that goes around or wait a minute does the shape morph throughout the year does it go from being a circle to a half pie shape to being this other fucking weird shape that I don't know how you could actually ever make that unless you use magic? Hmm. This is kind of a problem, don't you see? Let's explain further, shall we? Specific number of daylight hours in specific locations during specific times of the year absolutely debunk and smash the AE map and circle sun and here is why there are plenty of observable proofs that prove the circle model 
is, is a wrong model of flat earth. There's no way for the model to um, produce the daylight hours that are, are real. I mean, millions of people live in these southern cities. We can show examples of that with animations and show how it's how it's impossible to, for, for it to reflect reality. You set the you set the sun's reach so we can't reach Antarctica, but it's it's just giving the Arctic 24-hour light as we know it does in the June summer. Then we we look at what the reach is. We look at how many daylight hours is that sun giving, and up north it's giving you know plenty it's given you know 12 or 12 to 14 but down south i mean you can pause it anywhere and you can see that along those latitudes where the cities are it's only given five or six hours of daylight then it's going dark again but they receive 10 hours of daylight on june the 21st or more this model can't give the reality a model must match reality i mean it's a basic fail of the of the Gleason's disc model, and it's it's a common sense, commonly known. Uh, you know, daylight hours can't be faked. The number of daylight hours can't be faked. So you could set the you could set the sun's reach so you know it's now a lot bigger. Now it now it will give ten hours of, of daylight um, to those places where where they actually receive it. But on the flip side, you know, if you look in the north now, everywhere within the tropic of of Cancer really is getting twenty four hour light which again we know is not reality. It's inherently flawed because of the time zones. An hour up in Canada is worth 20 minutes down south and you're done. So, the, the, you know, the sun's reach needs to be three times, three times further down south. It doesn't make sense. And then we have, the, you know, the equidistant, equidistant solstices six months apart north and south here's here's two here's two pairs of examples again pause check it out for yourself go check some other places do your own research but this is truth and some people do do recognize that there's a problem with the uh, with you know the daylight hours on the disc model so we get uh, animations like this and clearly, what what is the sun doing? What is the what is that sun doing? It is, you've got a dark patch and then a light patch behind it, and then it, and then and then it goes to an egg shape in the in the June in the June solstice. And people were looking and go, "All oh, right, well that's how it works," because it is actually giving the right the right daylight hours there. Believe it or not, it is now giving plenty of plenty of sunshine to to south and, and obviously the Antarctic twenty four hour daylight. And it's, it's all to do with simply the way they've created this this animation. It's the rectangular Mercator map. You can see it's the same graphics from, from timeanddate.com. And they put it through a polar coordinate filter and sequenced it, so it's animated. And that will satisfy some people. Say, so, ah, well, that's how it works. Watch that. The sun can't light up, you know, the North Pole there, but it can light up places much, much further. It's nonsense. It was demonstrated very clearly in that last clip that you cannot light up a circular portion of the circular disk and get all the time zones correct with the exact number of daylight hours. And you also can't just light up half of the AE map like a half pie shape and spin it around and get all the specific number of daylight hours correct. Believe it or not, in order to get the specific number of daylight hours anywhere near correct, the shape of the sun would have to morph throughout the year and it would have to go from being a circle shape to a half pie shape to this uh, weird shape on the right that I'm not sure how the sun would make that. So the egg size uh, night portion there while the sun is making this other weird shape. I don't know how that could even be possible. And you can also see that Antarctica is lit up all the way around on that one. But flat earthers will say, 
there is no 24 hour sun in the South Pole. So here's another huge problem. Why are flat earthers trying to make this map work by going to timeanddate.com and using timeanddate.com graphics to wrap around this AE map to try to make the sunlight hours work? If you go to timeanddate.com to get your sunlight hours to work and you use their graphics, you're going to end up lighting up Antarctica like on the far right because timeanddate.com is based on the globe mechanics. So, flat earthers going to timeanddate.com to correct the problems presented here presents a whole new problem in and of itself. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is ODD. Today is Thursday, October 20th, 2016. I basically am just about to document something that I was going to do anyway. And I just figured that this might give you guys some insights or ways of looking at things when you're going about your research. I'm going to take 24 of these still images from timeanddate.com, uh, one for each hour of the day. And then I'm going to convert them all to azimuthal equidistant Gleason style maps. The map that I happen to believe in, and I don't mind if you think I'm a shill because I believe in this map. Alright, I got all my images, now I just need to put them in my premiere. Yeah, so there you have it, man. There's the... that's... that looks about right to me. That looks... so... I don't know. Hopefully this helps somebody out there. Uh, we'll see you next time. Now, when ODD tried to correct the problem of a circular sun not providing the proper amount of specific daylight hours and specific locations, when he went to timeanddate.com and then he wrapped their animations around this uh, AE map, what he did was he created this new problem where the sun's shape that it creates with light has to morph throughout the year. That is a huge problem. And if you think that globe heads who are sworn to protect the globe are going to overlook this problem, well, they aren't. To match basic observations of sunrise and sunset at equinoxes, the flat width flying spotlights must create an illuminated area that nicely divides the flat earth in half. This immediately tells us that the flat arc flying spotlight has a lamp shade. There will be two times per year when the flying spotlight has to illuminate earth this way. Every day though it's daylight for essentially half earth's surface and night for the rest. That leaves us with the question of what the flat hard flying spotlight does for the rest of the year. On a spheroid these things are easy to understand. Half of Earth is illuminated, half isn't. What does this illuminated area look like on a turtle mounted space pizza though? Let's unwrap a spheroid illuminated per the June solstice back out onto a flat Earth and see where night and day are. It's clearly different to the half and half illumination of the equinoxes that we looked at earlier. What does this mean for flat widths? It can only mean one thing. The flat hard flying spotlight's lampshade changes shape. Oh my god! Jake just agreed with cool hard logic, everyone! Jake must be a shill now! He must be going back to believing in the globe! No, you dummies. I'm the only one who ever took on cool hard logic. So of course I've watched his videos, and the ones where he's punched significant holes in the AE map, yeah, I can ask you guys, hey, how do you solve these problems that Cool Hard Logic presents, where he kind of destroys the AE map? Well, my fellow peers, like Jaren, he'll just show up and say, wow, 
Jake just dropped a link to a cool hard logic video. What a piece of work. Show me where IPS has done that. Show me where Patty Steers has done that. Wow, that's unbelievable. I'm out of here. This is disgusting. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Jaren, you didn't fucking debunk him, did you? You didn't debunk part two and part three of Cool Hard Logic's videos, did you? No, so when I post the fucking link and I ask for someone to try to debunk those certain spots in the videos, it's not because I believe in the globe or it's not because I love Cool Hard Logic. I'm the only one who ever took him on. It's because he presents significant arguments against the AE map. Has he ever proven curvature exists? No. Did he ever prove that the earth was spinning? No. But he did punch serious holes in that stupid map and make it look silly. And funny when I make fun of the map, guys like you show up to defend it, Jaren. Hmm. When else did Jaren show up to defend some bullshit? Oh, I remember. That's right. When I made a video saying the rapper B.O.B., Bob the Rapper, when I said he was a, a shill or some kind of uh, plant, Jaren showed up and defended Bob the Rapper when he wanted $200,000 to send satellites to space. And then when he upped the ante to a million dollars and B.O.B. now wants a million dollars to do any and all experiments anyone can think of, yeah, Jaren was all cool with that and defended him the whole way. He shows up to defend B.O.B., shows up to defend the A.E. model, and not only does he defend the A.E. model, he throws out these little backhanded little insults that are absolutely incorrect and bullshit. He's actually said to me on more than one occasion that the majority of my subscribers on YouTube are due to B.O.B. the Rapper somehow. Yeah, half my subs are because of B.O.B. the Rapper saying that the earth is flat. Oh, really, Jaren? How come when I made two videos calling him full of shit and a bitch and a sellout, how come half my subs didn't fucking unsubscribe and walk away? Nope, they're still all intact. Sure, I lost some fake loser subs who actually think B.O.B. is a genuine guy, but not half of them, not a quarter of them, not an eighth of them. I'll bet it's pretty insignificant how many chump stain subscribers I, I lost because I called Bob for what he is, a sellout controlled bitch. And then, of course, you showed up to defend his sellout controlled bitch-like behavior. Why, Jaren? What's in it for you? Oh, but listen to this. According to Jaren, it doesn't matter if the flat earth is a controlled rollout or not. Literally, his words, it doesn't matter if Matt Boylan and Eric Dubé were paid to release the flat earth in a controlled rollout. And it doesn't matter if the mainstream media is pushing it as a controlled rollout. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is getting the flat earth message out to the people who don't know about it. That's all that matters to Jaren. So whether or not this, a con this is a controlled rollout and people are being paid 